Considered by many experts as the best modern main battle tank, T-14 Armata sure seems very good, but just like every other tank, it has problems. And in this video, we will take a look at those problems. Keep in mind that I will mainly focus on the tank's problems in this video. I don't want to come out as saying as the tank is bad. I'm just simply pointing out the tank's problems. But before we take a look at those problems, I want to take a moment to talk about my sponsor, War Thunder. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and most immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus, a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. Okay, the first problem, and the one that bugs me the most, is the lack of the backup sight for the main gun. I don't know what was the idea behind this, but the tank apparently lacks any backup sight for the main gun, which means that if the main gun sight gets destroyed or damaged, the gunner wouldn't be able to use the main gun of the tank. There might have been some additions to the all-around cameras to convert them to some sort of backup sight, but I really doubt it. I couldn't find any reliable evidence for the tank having any sort of backup sight. What could be the case when the main gun sight is destroyed, the commander could use his own panoramic sight to lead the main gun onto a target. Many modern tanks have this feature, but the problem would be to implement the correct ballistics for different projectiles, etc., since all of that is done by the gunner while using the main gun sight. So the accurate fire would be out of the question. The only thing left is for the commander to navigate the gunner's coaxial machine gun fire, but all of that would be avoided if the backup sight was implemented on the tank. What is even more confusing is that Russia clearly has backup sights developed. Currently they are mounting double backup sight on their new T-90M tanks and cheap T-80 BVM tanks. That doesn't really make sense, since T-80 BVM is a much cheaper and much worse tank than T-14 Armata, and yet it is being treated with a backup sight. Next problem is the fact that the commander doesn't have the all-around vision from his hatch, since he is sitting next to other crew members in the hull. Instead, he has to rely on the all-around cameras to look around the tank. What's even worse is that those cameras don't appear to even be the color cameras. Most of modern tanks today don't have color cameras, but that's not big of an issue since the commander can look around through the vision blocks or by opening his hatch. To be fair though, T-14's hull is pretty tall much taller than compared to most of other tanks, so looking around from the hatch isn't that problematic. The only disadvantage is that he can't look behind him because of the turret. But you don't often look behind when you are in a tank, and if you really need to, you have the cameras. But all of that is irrelevant in combat, since in combat the commander would focus on using his panoramic thermal sight to search for targets. But the clear view from the hatch had to be sacrificed, to provide the maximum protection to the crew by moving them to the thickly armored capsule which is isolated from the rest of the tank. Another small problem involving the crew is that the gunner doesn't really have his own entry hatch. This means that he can't peek his head out of the tank when there is no enemy threat, but that's not relevant for escaping the tank since the tank has a pretty big escape hatch in the middle of the crew compartment, right under the gunner's seat. So, if the crew needs to leave the tank quickly, they can all do so without waiting for other crew members to leave. This is not as bad as many other tanks who don't have any kind of hatch for the gunner, but I thought it should be mentioned. There is also some confusion about the defense from top attack munition, like Javelin. T-14 has the aerosol discharges for the top as well, and since Javelin uses thermal signature to target the tanks, T-14 can discharge those to cover its thermal signature, but the problem is that it is impossible to know when you are being targeted by Javelin, so the only way is to be lucky enough to see it, which is very unlikely. But the crew appears to be safe from top attack projectiles. The top armor of the crew compartment is said to have composites inside as well, to protect the crew from the top attack munition. On top of that, it has new ERA mounted on top, which even further decreases the penetration. 
Now, some sources say how T-14 can also jam missiles, but I really couldn't find anything 100% reliable, so take that with a pinch of salt. But by far the biggest problem with T-14 is its availability. Before 2019 there were only around 35 T-14 tanks made, and in early 2019 14 more were ordered. They were supposed to be delivered by this year, but no information on that. So at best there are only around 50 T-14 Armada tanks. That is very, very few. The state trials are also supposed to be finished by the end of 2020, but knowing them they will probably delay them even further. But I don't want to claim anything, we will wait until the end of the year and we'll see what happens. The biggest problem is the inability to deliver the orders. Russian MOD ordered 100 T-14s by the end of 2020, and Ural Vagon Zavod was like, no problemo, we can do that. But they obviously can't. The production of the tank is extremely slow, and who knows how long will it take for them to deliver a substantial number of those tanks. Yet another problem is that since there is no crew in the turret, if a misfire happens, there wouldn't really be a way to clear it during combat. But we don't really know if the tank has some implemented feature for dealing with misfires, like the autoloader unloading the loaded projectile or something similar. Another thing with misfires is that they are very rare and unlikely to happen. But since we don't know what is the clearing procedure for misfires in T14, we can't really be certain if that's an actual problem. But I thought it should be mentioned. Now, I wanted to address some things that people consider or thought are the problems of the tank. There was some information about the failed development of T14's engine and that the tank would be left with no engine and that its entire future is jeopardized. Well, that's not really the case. The Chelyabinsk factory was tasked of developing an engine for T14. That's true, but they were actually tasked with developing a completely new engine. You see, the engine T14 has right now was developed back in 2011, but they discovered it had worse fuel and oil consumption than they hoped for, so they tasked the ChTZ to develop a new engine, which was later nicknamed Seagull, until the end of 2017 and then they further delayed it until the end of 2019. But at the end, they failed to develop it, so the media picked up on that and twisted the words to seem how T14 lost an engine completely, well that is not true. My friend from Russia even found a decision from court that the media who first wrote about that has to pay a fine for spreading misinformation. So T14 didn't lose an engine, but it lost a better engine. I also wanted to address something I keep saying every time I mention T14 in my videos. The low armored turret is not a problem. The turret is much smaller than it appears to the naked eye because there is cover around it to reduce the thermal and radar signature and to protect the electronics from small arms fire. All tests concluded that the turret would be extremely hard to hit. Even the US did those kinds of tests on their Abrams TTB tank and came to the same conclusion. Even if it's hit, the only thing that would be knocked out is the main gun. But because of the composite armor, if any other tank is hit, in the mantlet or the area around it, the gun would still be knocked out. If you want to know more about that, you can watch my entire video where I talk about the turret specifically and in much more depth. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. All in all, I have to say the T14 is a great tank, but it obviously has problems. The one that makes the least sense is the lack of a backup site. But all other problems kinda make sense because sacrifices had to be made to provide the best survival chances to the crew. But we also can't exclude the fact that the tank's production is very very slow, and especially for Russia, that's a problem, because they don't have the defense budget of US to drain hundreds of millions in the projects, so they have to be very careful with what they are doing. And that would be all, if you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon, and if you can't, leave a like on the video or subscribe if you're new, it also helps a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video, have a nice day.